We're here at Mobile World Congress 2014 in the Huawei Pavilion. At the speaker's corner, Huawei experts have been discussing some of the cutting edge technologies that they're using in the field. Today we talked about just-in-time transport, as, as, which is an LTE key success factor. But first, we heard from Patrick Donegan, a heavy reading analyst. You can deliver much more capacity on the air interface, and you can load up on performance in the core to support it. But if you don't have enough capacity and intelligence in the transport domain that links them, then you're not going to deliver the experience that consumers expect. A flexible, scalable transport network, or as Huawei refers to it, a just-in-time transport network, is a key success factor for LTE. Here's an excerpt from the presentation by Kelvin Sun, the director of Mobile Backhaul Solutions at the Fixed Network Solutions Marketing Group at Huawei. So maybe some problem in the uh, speakers. And then uh, I will discuss with us, you know, uh, LTE being the success in very audio operators. But how to guarantee, you know, totally be the success we think, you know, for transport, especially for the just-in-time uh, transport resource for LT, it becomes more important. The mobile backhaul becomes become more complicated than before. Uh, especially, you know, the current network is based on hybrid head network network. It's uh, 2G plus 3G plus LT, even the LT advanced. So, it's the two key changes comparing with the 2G and 3G backhaul. The first one we can see, 2G and 3G, the backhaul is uh, uh, separated with the core network. <coughs> but in the LTE, uh, the small cell generated, and also uh, one new architecture within the small cell backhaul. So it's the new solution and the new requirement for operators. And from the, from the backhaul perspective, we uh, can see you know, backhaul. In 2G and 3G backhaul, uh, backhaul and the core is separated due to RC and the BSC uh, exist. But in RT, S1 services is an independent perspective from the small cell to EPC. The first one is transport resource. We know uh, when the capacity increased along with the 2G, 3G, and the RT, even the RT advanced. You know, uh, maybe in 2G and the early of 3G, the microwave can support uh, uh, 10 hours or even the 15 hours. But the second one is based on the architecture. Uh, we think that from the architecture DNA or the architecture, architecture uh, capability requirement, we think uh, uh, 30 months lead time is necessary. And also from the uh, OA and I, we think, uh, you know, uh, the first change is the service migrate from TDM to IP. And also network elements in 10 times goes, and also the S1, LT S1 service, and twin uh, combine the backhaul and the call. How to, uh, from the uh, innovation or the uh, resource of abundant perspective, we this year we play play for, for the VBAN. It's also you know uh, first deployment. We know the VBAN license based on the CCK is unlicensed, unlicensed cycle. And also uh, from Huawei perspective, we uh, innovated one box for the house backbones. Okay, the second one is based on the the code scale. We know uh, all the home, all the sub subscribers home. They have the codes. But how to reuse the very abundant, very plenty of resources to fast uh, small cell backhaul deployment? Currently, we can provide this solution, right? The last one based on the, the, the people side uh, of OEU pump. If the network has the uh, G pump or E pump, pump network already, how to fast deployment small cell? We just uh, Introduce one SM, SMP uh, ONT embedded in SMP optical module. It's a fast uh, deployment, uh, power network to the small cell. Thank you.